Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for August 2022 to order. Time is now 7 p.m. First item is to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which it stands, one nation, on the continent, and the for anyone who's interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. Meetings are being recorded, uh, audio and video. Please be sure to silent or set your phones to vibrate so that we do not disturb the, the flow of the meeting. Uh, the first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of July the 28th, 2022 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the August 20 uh, workshop meeting, but they're not done yet. So we're going to have to table that motion for the time being. I'll wait until Irene comes back. Irene. We just saw Did you say the treasurer's report? Uh, not quite. Okay. Does he need a hand getting connected? No. No. Does he want a paper agenda to follow? Okay. Okay. Next is the treasurer's report. I'll turn it over to Irene. All right. Roll for me. Sure. So as we've been trending with the tax revenue, we usually have that big bump up front in the beginning of the year, and we don't see much growth throughout the remains of the year. Um, please let me know if there's any of the numbers that you guys wanted to discuss. Okay. Um, if you want to scroll to the 360s, um, under building permits, we have a pretty increase of 2.41. We're going to definitely see a decrease in that number, and we all anticipate that. And just to let the public know, um, in the past, what wasn't happening for a couple of years is people weren't being built back for engineering costs, which is something that the township should have been doing. So I want to say there may have been a five or six year gap where that wasn't being done. So unfortunately, the township was losing funds. Um, essentially, the township was paying for work done on people's private properties. So anytime now, if there's any kind of a project done and it needs review by the engineer, you're going to get a bill for it because that's the way it should have been all along. And I can say with confidence, the township has received about $41,000 back in reimbursement as a result of implementing the correct procedure and billing back people for work done on their private property when that should have been done. So we've recovered a large chunk of that information there. There's yeah. still a fair number outstanding with the uh, some of the older stone crops. Um, yeah, yeah, and and I'm just about done compiling that. I'm going to have Dan review that material with me. Some of this discussion is going to lead over into the bills next. Okay. Uh, next item is around 400 uh, communications and postage. We're going to obviously need to increase that um, with auditing and bookkeeping measures. They by contract any auditor typically has a 4% increase and under contract, we're gonna see a 4% increase with that number. Um, so the next item is the 405 category, 405.26 in particular. There's some items that I need to actually review that may have been recategories under multimedia. So, so you're gonna see numbers shift around for the next meeting because we did do some purchases and it should correctly be placed under the office equipment rather than a multimedia category. Um, and then 409 with the utilities, again, we are going to see an increase because utilities always increase on average, uh, expected increase would be about 4% each year. And the windows are our biggest source of loss of heat and cooling. So as long as we're here, we're going to keep on seeing big jumps on that. Um, under public safety, uh, this year we had given a donation of $2,500 to the police departments because of unanticipated needs and of course the unfortunate cost in uh, fuel and so that's another category we're going to have to consider for the upcoming year and again their cost always increases every year as well so 
we're going to see a jump in that. Okay. Um, the next item is the um, under 430, 431 in particular. The street cleaning that goes up every year. So again, we're going to see a little bit of a jump there. But to me, like most of the other categories, I don't know how well you've been trending them, but most of the other categories have been quite stable. Under 451, um, the other service and charges, and that's uh, technically under recreation and culture. I know you had, we were looking about the street signs. Mm -hmm. Do we want to consider that part of that, that part of the budget, or we want to leave it for what it is at this point? Um, the, the speed signs total for about 6,000 for the yeah. pair. Yeah. Um, we'd either be able to use that, and I'm not sure we're going to consume the entirety of that budget right, before right. the end of the year, or since we haven't been doing much building maintenance other than like we replaced the door, we could repurpose out of that, that $54,000 budget line. That, yeah, I think I think that, you know, to, to find it somewhere to get done, because I agree with Jim on that notion, because the prices are going to go up next yeah. year. And then if we go down to the 493 category, that's where some of the stuff has to be recategorized back into the office supplies. Yeah. And that's about all the comment that I really had on, on this review this month's budget. And so, you know, overall, I think we've been staying pretty much on target, which is a nice, nice thing. Um, you okay if I transition over into the bills? Please do. All right. So there's yes. Questions. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Can you come up here so everyone can hear you on the recording? Yeah. Um, under police services, mm -hmm. yes, what was that amount? Twenty five hundred, and then no, not the twenty five. There was a large amount. Oh, very, oh, that's very, that's, very, the very, very, that's the very, annual. That's the annual fee. Oh, okay. That's, that's the, the annual fee. fee. That's, that's, that's the what? That's annual fee. That's the okay. Annual payment we make. For I don't think we have enough police services. No, we don't. Yeah, there's that's a lot not. going on in yeah. this town, and yeah. people are driving like crazy through here. Yeah. I mean, somebody almost hit me at my mailbox. Yep. Yeah. So we need to do something. Yeah. Can we paint lines? Can we well, so, uh, put nails out? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Not so much with the nails, but one of the things that we're, we did is you may have noticed the lines on Main Street. There's yeah. uh, the two outside white lines it's to help visually narrow the road. So people are going to be a little less inclined to unintentionally speed. You're still going to have people that are going to come off the highway and are going to be intentionally speeding. There's only so much you can do about that. We had looked into getting a stop sign or got a couple of places potentially along Main Street to, to provide a, a break in the traffic. But unfortunately, the way the regulatory stuff sits, it, it we, we can't. Um, so we're also looking at putting up some pedestrian bollards, a little like neon yellow plastic things in the crosswalks. We're getting crosswalks painted. Um, we're trying a bunch of different things to try to curtail some of the speeding because that has been a, a pretty rampant problem. And unfortunately, even if we had a, a dedicated police department, they'd almost have to sit there 24 seven in order to, to get people because it's not any sort of consistent rhyme or reason. Yeah. But did they come here at all? So? Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. 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 Quite a bit. I mean, you may not see them. On, on another note with the police department, we're trying to have better communication um, there's a change in the chief this past year, and we're seeing how we can work better together and help them with resources, whether it's just helping information with putting together grants, et cetera. So we're trying to have much better communication and understanding what their needs are so that they could help our township out better too. So, no, yeah, no. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So if we go on to the bills, do you have the bills up? Right um, I do not have okay. the bills up, but I can pull that up. No, no, that's, that's okay. There's only one bill that, uh, well, there's two two minor issues. One bill, we had approved um, the paint. We had approved the buying of tickets for the police department mm -hmm. up to the sum of $200. It came to $236. Okay, so, we'll, so. Just, if you make a motion, okay, um, we'll have to and probably amend to the amend. agenda. I'm okay. sorry, Sue. Can yeah. I just pay $36? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can I, can I yeah. Yeah. $36 I mean, petty cash? I was going to say, can we just take $36 out of petty cash? Okay. Yeah. It's the minimus. Yeah, it's the minimus. Right. Okay, that's so that's then, the, yeah, we'll that's the only thing. Because I know some people are very particular. The other item is that we did get the money from Cold Summit. They did pay for that. Part of that was the traffic study for um, that whole mm -hmm. project. And we did receive half of that from Wilmersdorf. But now that we've been reimbursed the full amount, we have to cut the check back to Wilmersdorf. Yeah. Okay. So just to let you guys know, I'll be doing that because we can't benefit by that whole um, deal. I'm glad we got reimbursed for it. I, I wasn't anticipating it. Um, you know, things went through. They did not pay the attorney's fees on that, though. They only paid for the engineering fees. So I'm going to just, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take what they gave us. So, okay. 
Um, may I make the motion to approve payment of the bills? I'll okay. second. For August of 2022. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone wishing to address the board may do so by coming up to the microphone. Please be sure to clearly state your name and address. Uh, be sure to sign in on the public comment sheet. And Sue, for the record, there are two people on Zoom. Okay, no, wait. You forgot the blurb about executive session. Oh. oh, thank you. So real quick, there was an executive session held at the end of the last Board of Supervisors meeting on July 28th to discuss potential litigation. Uh, there is no follow-up action on that. Um, so at this time... Uh, we have two people on Zoom, someone named Ruth and Brandon Sweeney. Ruth? And Ruth just, just Ruth and Brandon Sweeney. And I'll turn the floor over to Al. Albert Ferrandino, 55 Main Street. First of all, the, the screen there, the, the, the letters are so small that I can't even read from back there. Okay. So I, it's either going to be bigger letters so people from back there could see it and see what what it says. Okay. okay. I'll see if I can adjust that. I, can... I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't understand a word she said about this here. Nothing. Okay. Were, were you having a difficult time hearing her too? No, or... I'm so mumbling I can't hear. I I'm can't sorry. Hear I'm sorry. I'm not feeling the greatest this evening. I apologize. My voice is kind of going and I have a cough and I don't feel well. Okay. Usually I'm pretty loud. I know. I know. But that's yep. what I'm saying. I yep. can't understand yep. what you're saying. I'm sorry. I'm just not well this evening. And on this Act 537, mm -hmm. this past month, he said it went up, the, the, the money went up to the $9.5 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are we worried about $9.5 million? You put the plan in there for online management and period. Now, we, we can't do that anymore. That is not an option. When the other supervisors set the plan in and it got approved, that changed the dynamic of the game. We are now in a state where if we do not comply with the approved plan, if we pull the, the plan back, hard pull it, as has been talked about before, we can potentially be fined for a minimum of $300 a day. That's and, the minimum. And, minimum. and this... why? Because the DEP has the authority the and jurisdiction has, to do it. has the authority that uh, if you put a plan in there that you want the sewer, they'd be more than glad to do it. But if you put a plan in that you, we don't need the sewer, it's the plan that you put in. Well, Not this Nick, which I was here before. They, what they, they already did. submitted it, though, Al. Like, no matter what so I want to do. When's the time up for that? There is no time up for that. It, Every it, four years, you got to put a new no, plan No, no, in. no, no, no. It's in. It's done. That's it. Okay. And then yep. you submit a new plan. That's not exactly it's how it works. It's, anyway. an option. it's got to start somewhere. It's no longer an option. They've They approved <clears throat> that original plan. And now they've mandated that we do it. Do we got, we're in trouble. We're in big trouble. Do we got to take this to court again? Hopefully if, if not. If you want to, you can. It's not going to I mean, be we, anywhere. Took it, we took them to court yeah. five times, and five times we won, big time. No. You won, yeah. you won on a minor point, but you can't. We won on the sword. We won on, on due process, Al. The the lawsuit yeah. that was won was around due process. So, you know, you got to find a way because who the hell can afford that kind of money? Nobody. That's why we're trying to find ways to fund it if we have to go that route or to have an income study to prove that it's completely financially infeasible. Get a bill submitted. Oh, I have everything up and send to Biden. He's got a lot of freaking money to give away for free. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the comment, Al. Uh, I'm not point. putting anybody down. I'm just saying, he, he, well, all this money he's given away, let it help the people well, let's, in this country. Let's put it this way. If there is money to be found, whether it's from the federal government with like the uh, Inflation Reduction Act or anything else, please believe we are going to go after it aggressively yep. because there's no possible way, unless this is more than 75% funded by grants, anybody can afford it. And that's, to me, that's just common sense. So what happens if you say, okay, you got to put a sewer in? Everybody's got to move out because they can't afford it. I I certainly don't want to see that. I I live it, in the affected it's, area. It's supposed to be a hell of waste here. I know. Like I said, I I live I live in the affected area too, Al. Yeah, I'm so. Do your work. You promised you were, you were going to do your work. I am. You I don't know. Take him later. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what we're doing. Yeah, we're we're doing everything we possibly can, Al. Yep. So I don't want to see this bullshit about the sewer again because 
I got I got the people in town riled off here that don't don't string it out. Oh, the money will be here. Yeah, one one way or the other, Al. None of us want to see it become a ghost town, either by the sewer getting put in and it being too expensive or being not put in and people having to put in like holding tanks and pump out like every two weeks. We don't want either one of those extremes. We want to find a compromise, a good solution. Well, you don't that, pump out every two weeks. What well, the hell you got? I mean, if you have a if you have a small, small household or small tank and a decent sized household, like two I got two, two tanks, one in the front, one one in the front and one in the back. The one in the back and never got anything in it. Never. Okay. I'm just saying. Like so, if you have even if you have to pump out it once every two months, you're looking at another eighteen hundred dollars a year, give or take. So what what are we pumping out? Green water. No, when you have a holding tank, you're pumping out everything. It does not go out like like it would with a sand mound or a septic tank. Bottom line here, Al, is we don't want to see anybody get run out of town. Please believe me when I say that. <coughs> I'm going to have to keep my eye open here because if, if, it smell, if I smell something that's not for the people in town here. Yeah, mm -hmm. please come to the meeting, like just like you are now, and, and, and bring it up. Because if it's something that we're not aware of, I, I would certainly want to be aware of it. But I got to know what's going on. With, yeah. with the DP, I got to know what's going on with the rest of the people. Yeah. And that's where, that's one of the agenda items as we will talk about Act 537. Please, oh. do you have any other comments, Al? Not right now. Okay. I will. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other public comments this evening? You guys call. Yeah. Yeah. Is and I've talked about it before. There is a sinkhole from this water, so the the front off water, right in front of my garage, and it's sinking more and more. Now, Butch put some lines around it today, right on the corner there. But and I talked to uh, Sharon Yarnell, is her maiden name, and she's a twenty foot sinkhole in front of her house on Main Street. Jesus, have you taken a look at that? She said her house. Okay. Now the road is cracked from my house across to her house. Mm. Not anywhere else up the highway, up the road. Yeah. But my house, and I was standing there looking at it, and I thought, this isn't right. This isn't good. And I know I've, I've been, why put in the orange cone from the car show? I left it there mm -hmm. because people are going around the corner and they're hitting it and it's getting. It's sinking more and more. Okay. So we have an engineer come out. Well, I, we talked about this on Saturday. I yeah. wanted to have the engineer go out because the, the pipe that Al's been asking about for a while now while yes. we're waiting on the culverts. Now that we have the backhoe and can actually do a lot of the work that would be needed for that ourselves, we're going to start doing that. Right. Because that and that's the time when we, the whole problem started. I never had flooding in my basement. Mm -hmm. When they put that in, the water comes right across my property comes and runs right into my basement and it runs into Tom's pool next door and it never did. Yeah, so yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. right, I know. Yeah. right yeah. across the yard so from Tom into his house. Yeah, that's been on the agenda for a while now. We're actually, I know. We're, we're going to uh, gonna look into that and have the engineer give us the, the exact detail of where we need to place the pipe and what we have to do to pull that so water now, back away from your so house. So now how do you fix that hole? That's a good question. And I'll be honest, I have no idea. That's something that I'd, I'd have to ask the engineer, engineer about. I, yeah. I, yeah. I've never had to fix yeah. a sinkhole before. And I mean, I'm thinking, you know, I don't want the garage to sink in and Absolutely. everything in my garage sink in. But if she's talking, oh, yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. Uh, I it's on the north side of the, yeah. of the road, yeah. and it's going to the stops. Yeah. Is the crack where the pipe is? Yeah. Okay. I'm, okay. I, I was there in the third inch. I'm just kind of off the cuff wondering if we don't have a situation like we have with the culverts where the pipe is starting to collapse. And if that's the case, we obviously have to replace that too. But um, if you can, sometime this upcoming week, I don't know how much you're going to be able to see through that pipe, if anything at all, okay. but I'm going to today and you can't see much through it. 
There's not a lot of this. Okay. Okay. We'll take a further look at it. Yeah, and while it, we're... If it wouldn't be, you know, I'm there 50 years. Mm -hmm. If it wouldn't be that the road was straight across and now I've got this yeah. going on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and it's, and I'm really actually afraid to go over it. You know, yeah. so I'm it's coming out of the garage. The McCarthy yeah, then. I have an email. Okay. Up. So okay. I, I have something ready to go out because there's a couple of things that I'm going to be asking McCarthy Engineering to do. And that's, that's one of them. Like I said, now that we have the backhoe and we're in kind of a holding pattern for some okay. of the other road work. We're going to turn our attention to to doing that. Yeah, I'm, you know, because the water comes down along my garage and I'm thinking, I'm hoping that there's no hole going along my garage. Yeah. I thought, well, well I, I think. I mean, the whole thing. Okay. Well, I meant underneath. Yeah. Well, we'll have the engineer go out and take some right. sooner the better. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah like I said, yeah, I have I have the email piped up. Yeah. I was just going to wait to send it until after tonight in case there's anything yeah. I wanted to add to it. Okay. Yeah. So it's ironic you brought it up because we talked about that Saturday. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was when we were talking about on Saturday. Lee, can you come up yeah. here so everyone can hear you, please? Yeah, Lee. Lee, Lee, can you come up come here so everyone can hear you on the recording? Yeah. Well, no, it, you, it's you, recorded. you can, it's recorded. but it, it recorded. captures it better. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. Back in the 80s, mm -hmm. we put a new septic system in a first Kimmelberger slice. Okay. Because the whole thing went down the top. Mm -hmm. So that is right across the street from there. Okay. And that was a major sinkhole and, and it was running towards the street. Running north south. And when they put the sewer line back to the storm sewer, mm -hmm. we had a major. Okay. That's because good. Because I was with uh, pastors at the time they did it. And I also put the system back in for the Himmelberg. And we put a lot. 40 yards of country down in the, the field. So that whole area is known as sinkhole the problem. Okay. Now, thank you for sharing with that. I, I had no idea of the historical background of that. So right. we will, like I said, I'll, I'll add that to the message that I'm going to send the engineer for him to pay specific attention to signs of anything like that in the surrounding area when, when they yeah, start speaking out. Just in that whole area where the problem was. Okay. And when they put that in, they do have a signal to try to do that. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Any other public comments? Yeah. Al's back. Like a TV show. <laughs> Already got my name in there and the address. On this Main Street, who owns that? Uh, who owns, uh, who's in charge of that? Pandot or we are? We are. Okay, now we can stop this traffic going up and down here that's wrecking the damn road, okay? I'm going to take a video to everyone that comes down through there. These landscaping company, one after another, and then they go all the way down to Womersdorf and they turn off. They come up Main Street, they go up the end of the town, and go up 422. They don't go up 422. I don't know why you do that. It's because they, they're doing that on purpose. You ought to hear the racket that they make when they hit a, a bump over a pothole. Yeah. And that's bullshit. So I'm going to, I'm taking video and everyone that comes up through there. So if Pentad owns the road, you better step up and-, well, and Main, Main, Main Street is ours. Main Street is Marion Township. Okay, and then, then we got to step up and stop this, the traffic. Well, so, I mean, how- Nuisance track. Well, I mean, there, there's, there's, there's a fine, fine line between I'm, nuisance- How are you going to stop them? Well, so Jim, there's there's a couple of things we could do, but it's a fine line, and uh, maybe the attorney will weigh in on this one, where you could put things like no uh, non-class two traffic through, like no trucks except for local deliveries and things like that. But really, you start policing traffic that it's it's a road. At the end of the day, it's a public road. You should be able to drive on it. I mean, certain things within reason. You're not going to try and try and take a big rig down Main Street unless you're completely insane, but. Even on uh, municipal owned roads, a lot of changes made to them need to be accompanied by traffic studies mm -hmm. that are authorized and approved by PennDOT, which costs the township. You know, I'm, I'm, making, I'm making a traffic study on video. No, well, it's not, it, not like that. An official yeah. traffic study where lines lines are placed on the roadway. So PennDOT has an understanding of the volume of traffic that goes through that road. What better evidence you got when a movie camera shows everyone that comes on? That's not that won't be accepted by PennDOT as a as a traffic study. Yeah. 
Even though it's an Al Ferrandino traffic study, it wouldn't be a PennDOT approved. Well, I'm going to make one anyway. Okay. I'm going to make one, maybe a couple copies of it. But it's got to stop. When they hit out there, if you're asleep in early in the morning, guarantee you're awake. Yeah. You know, a lot of people work night shift. They got to sleep during the day. Yeah. So, so why did the guys come up? Why did the dump truck start going down the highway? I mean, down here at the main street. Why is a milk truck go down the main street? They can go down the end of, the end of town and make a, a right and go to that farm down there where you get the milk. Al, Al. <laughs> the, the reality is that traffic has the right to take the, the route they want to their destination because these are public roads. Yeah, well then, so I, I, I understand your question. Yeah. But then they should be responsible for fixing the roads then because the heavy vehicles like that are ripping up the roads up. Okay. Simple. You want to travel, then you'll be, Liable to pay for the roads. Then you see how quick the old boy got away. Yeah, it's there's you know a couple. What I mean? things, there's a couple of things that you said in there that sound simple, but aren't actually all that simple when you try to unravel them. But yeah, you know, the, if nothing else, the comment is certainly noted. Thank you for for letting us know. Thank you all. Okay. Seeing no more, no more public comments, we'll move into the main items for discussion. The first item is the CWP-LD 37 Main Street self-storage units. Uh, the final plans have been submitted to the Planning Commission. Yeah. The uh, final plans were submitted and the Planning Commission reviewed them at the August 16th meeting. They recommended that the Board of Supervisors grant conditional approval uh, of the final plan upon addressing the items in the McCarthy Engineering Review Letter dated August the 11th, uh, along with the receipt of the MPDS permit. Hi, uh, my name is Alex Hughes. I'm with the Crossroads Group. We are the engineering firm representing Brian Haubecker, who is the applicant for this project. Uh, we've had it in front of you a couple times already, but just to review, it's located at 37 Main Street. Uh, the property is about 9.4 acres, and we are looking to develop about three to four acres of it to turn into uh, six self-storage units. Each one's about 170 feet long and 30 feet wide, uh, about 34 units each, about 200 units total. Um, no public uh, utilities will be required other than power. There's no uh, water or sewer required. There's no on-site employees. Uh, permanent on-site employees. There will be some parking areas for some oversized vehicles, buses, trucks, RVs, boats, whatever, uh, whatever they need to park. Um, we did get a MacArthur review letter about the final plan dated August 11th. Uh, I'll run through it real quick. There's not much in here. Um, under the waiver section, uh, everything's done. We just got to add a note to the plan about the waivers that were approved previously. Uh, subdivision and land development, number one, we have the table with the calculations for PennDOT, we just have to add it to the plan, um, other than providing it as a separate document. Uh, item number two is just another note about the, the applicant and his relationship to the property. Item number three is just uh, about the boundary line monuments and the ones that we're going to be setting, just putting an elevation on them, getting them, getting that out there. Uh, number four is just a note about the planning commission recommended versus approved. Uh, number five is the MPAS permit that you mentioned. We did get our admin approval a few weeks ago. So okay. we're expecting the tech review in probably the next 10 to 14 days. We will address those comments and uh, get that back in. So that's in the works. Uh, number six goes in hand, hand in hand with that conservation district. Seven, the developer's agreement. Uh, that's a will comply. I do have a question for the solicitor. Do you have a standard developer's agreement for the township? Some townships have them just so we can get the right. Yeah, we do. Okay, so I'll put it in, in contact with you about that. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, under stormwater management, number one, back to the, the conservation district, we'll, we'll provide that once it's approved. Uh, the financial guarantee and the municipal stormwater funder both will comply. We'll get in contact with the engineer and the township to figure out what they are and that paid. Uh, the maintenance agreement, once again, we'll get that, we'll get that handled real sure. soon. And then the last one, uh, general comment number one, is just getting a cost estimate established so we can do the escrow and we're working on that, so we'll submit that with the final plan. So that's basically all that's outstanding. The biggest thing is the MPDS permit, and we are working with them. Hope to have that resolved in the next uh, six to eight weeks. Okay. Yeah. I don't have any objections to this. No. I'll, I'll make a motion to provisionally approve the. Um, 
this would be the, the final plan. So you should conditionally approve the final plan. Yeah. Uh, conditionally approve the final plan subjects to the completion of all of the items outlined in the McCarthy engineering letter and the receipt of the MPDES permit. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Act 537. Uh, our SEO, Alan Madera, is currently doing inspections in the Northwest District. Um, from when we checked in with him, he's about 10% through in terms of the actual inspections themselves. Um, we have received a letter from Tim Wagner at the DEP requesting an update on the status of our Act 537 plan. Um, I sent a draft copy around everybody. Sue was kind enough to make a, a couple of additions and grammatical corrections and things like that. Uh, Jim, I know you looked over it. Um, Irene? I haven't had the opportunity. Okay. So before you leave, I have a copy here. I'll show it okay. to you, but it's um, it, it's pretty on the nose. It's saying that, you know, we're looking for grant funding. We may, basically, we may need more time. Um, we're working with Hydroterra now to do the income study, to request grants and things mm -hmm. like that. And that the only conceivable way to do this is to get su sufficient grant funding. Otherwise, it's an impossibility. Um, I also put in there that we're, we are doing things, making progress, like with the, the you know, on lot management that we're, mm -hmm. we're trying our best to, to comply, um, but it's it's not been easy so far, and we expect it to not be easy going forward with finding the kind of money that we need. So I'll have you take uh, a quick look at yeah. that, but then I'd like Thank to get you. that out in the mail as mm -hmm. soon as possible, because it's been at least uh, more, probably more than a month since we got that letter from the DEP. So. Um, Andy also looked it over as well. I sent it to Andy. I don't. I, I didn't get any response back, so I'm going to assume it's probably okay. Okay. Also with the Act 537, um, we, uh, as I mentioned before, we did hire a firm, Hydroterra, who specializes in wastewater engineering and a lot of the grants that go along with that uh, to help us do the income study, assess feasibility, uh, try to get grants. And then ultimately, if we have to make some compelling argument about affordability, we'll at least have the, the numbers and the backing of that firm to, to make that argument. Um, we need to make sure that we are staying in compliance and communication with DEP because we very desperately want to avoid that minimum $300 a day fine from the consent order. Um, that could be very costly very quickly for us, and we need to make sure that we don't yeah. have any missteps. Um, one of the other things that was discussed at the workshop meeting when Hydroterra is here, uh, was here, was around assessing alternative means of conveyance. So rather than doing a gravity fed sewer, which uh, tends to have less maintenance over like a 20 year span, but is much more costly to install, uh, they're going to be doing a, a comparison analysis for us of the currently designed system versus a low pressure system. Um, as it was mentioned on Saturday at the workshop meeting, you don't have to dig quite down as far and you don't have to worry about grading because it is pressurized. Um, it's more more like water in that capacity, public water in the sense that you're able to move around obstructions rather than having to dig straight through them. So we're, we're looking forward to seeing that um, as we try to assess every possible avenue of how to attack the Act 537 since we're, we're in the situation that we're in now. Um, yes, Kelly? Do you say that this company will be looking for grants? Yes, awesome. uh, yes. Yeah. So between us looking and their company actually has a grant writer on staff, um, they're going to be looking at like RUS, there's a thing called H2O, there's stuff from the, like the American reinvestment, like the ARP money, um, there's stuff that's going to be coming down soon at the federal level from the like Inflation Reduction Act and the infrastructure, uh, what they, they call the infrastructure rebuild thing, but there's a lot of sources that, uh, as much as I hate to say it, there's more money now than there has been in the past 30 years. So we have a, a firm that specializes and has a good track record of doing these sort of things and has a, a grant writer on staff to try to make a good compelling argument for getting us the money. So we're, we're trying to enlist the help where we know we might have a shortcoming or it might be, I don't want to say too complicated or too hard for us, but uh, we're, we're bringing in the professionals to make sure that this gets done right. Um, the only other thing to mention is we are in process of submitting for what's called an LSA grant. Um, we have a couple of things that we need to do. I think there's a resolution that we have to sign off on this evening. No, um, next that's meeting. next meeting. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Sue. Um, but we're in the process of submitting for a grant around this. That's the first of what will be many. Yeah. 
all the all the information she requested it was forwarded to her so good yeah. good um do either of you have anything you want to add to the act 537 yeah thank you um the one thing that i will say is if we do ultimately try to make the, the change to the low pressure system one of the things that may have to happen is we may have to re-advertise mm -hmm. we may have to take public comments again mm -hmm. we'll have the all the requisite meetings around that um, but just so that everybody understands it is not a full change to the plan it is an amendment it is not something that we can get away with gutting the plan and submitting just a purely on lot thing that will not that will not carry water and will all but guaranteed trigger some sort of oh, yeah um so we're we're going to again try to approach this at every possible angle that we can to make sure that we're doing the right thing the downside though of doing that is that each homeowner would have to have a grinder pump Mm. At, I said the downside of of the alternative system is that each homeowner would have to have a grinder pump, and you would install that and you would maintain that. And personally, even though it may save us a couple million dollars, uh, I think we need to pursue more grants then because that to me is not the greatest idea in the world that, well, that you would have to install that pump to, to your point Jim, one of the things that they did mention is there are some rather than township oriented grants there are some grants for homeowners mm -hmm. to do things like the tapping fee and like for things like pumps so and stuff uh, like just that. know that we are we're, we're researching every everything. available grant that's out there and options for not, not just limiting it to grants we're looking at every facet of this right. that we possibly can to, to navigate like i said the situation that we're in right now I don't think there's anybody up here or any, of course, anybody in the room for that matter that is in favor of doing this, but DEP has told us you're going to do it or we're yeah. going to find you. So we're now at the end of this journey and we're just going to have to do it. Yeah. We're pretty much out of options. Yes. Yeah. I guess that's basic. Yep. What was the question about? The, well, the, the, depending on which system about, we put in. Yeah. So, it's what's it's not better for down the line. Yeah. It's just less expensive. Yeah, yeah. So, right. not necessarily. Not necessarily. So, it, it, even if we can get grants, it may be a situation where well, on the gravity system, it's a. And I'm going to make up numbers here. Please don't hold me to any of these numbers. Where on the gravity system it might cost you ten thousand dollars to hook up, whereas on the low pressure system it might only cost you six. But then you have to replace the pump once every ten years, and it's a three hundred dollar pump or four hundred dollar pump or something like that. Oh no, no, you can't do that. There's an ongoing cost, but you have to look at it over like a twenty year span. Is it better to pay ten thousand, or is it better to spend seven thousand over a ten year span? And that's that's what we're trying to look at is. We're trying not to be penny wise pound foolish would be the best way to do it we're not trying to, to cut it upfront cost and then just tack it on on the end or more on the end that's one of the big things we're considering as we look at this um again everything's on the table within reason but we're, we're trying to find how to work within the confines of what we're required to do by the dep Making the segue to the next agenda item, Hydro Terra Professionals had a proposal agreement. Uh, this was submitted through Joe Baldaz and Kimberly DeRosa, who attended the workshop meeting. Uh, they are helping us move forward uh, with meeting the milestones on the Act 537 that we are legally obligated to. They're pursuing numerous grants for us. The LSA is the first of many, uh, and they will be working diligently to keep us in compliance uh, with the schedule for the DEP. Uh, we made a motion at Saturday's workshop meeting to hire them, and they've already started work. Yeah. Like that day. Yeah. Where are they from? Uh, they're like, I think one's Glenmore. like why I'm missing. Glenmore. Glenmore, thank you. They're they're close by. They're a, a relatively local firm. Okay. Next, also on the sort of Act 537 vein of things is 19 Main Street. There was an issue with the septic system there. Our SEO investigated a complaint about the overflow of sewage and issued a notice of violation. He met with the owner. The property is half of a semi-detached home with a lot size of 0.1, or excuse me, 0.16 acres uh, for 19 main and a lot size of 0.17 acres for 17 main. Uh, both have a well in the rear yard and an outhouse or, or privy uh, that has been repurposed as a cesspool. 19 main is only 19 feet wide with a house in the front and a garage in the back. 
uh, privacy fence on either side. Because of the small lot size, a septic system or sand mound is an impossibility. They can't meet the requirements to install that, uh, which leaves the only option being a holding tank. Uh, additionally, because of the small size of the property, the SEO is not really even sure if they would be able to get the equipment in to dig a hole, pile the dirt, bring in the holding tank, and actually do the installation. So his best technical guidance, uh, assuming we approve it, is actually to essentially treat the cesspool as a, a holding tank and require that they, or suggest strongly that they pump monthly rather than every two to three years, which is what they have been doing. Um, we would need to monitor the situation closely to make sure that we're not having any sort of impact or uh, worsening conditions there. Uh, but again, to put it in its simplest form, it would be treated like a temporary holding tank and would be the, the least cost and imposition to the homeowner. Um, if we agree with this, we would need to notify Alan and he'll take care of this, the, the rest in terms of documentation and correspondence with the, the parties. Um, personally, I'm, I'm in favor of this because it, it is the least painful solution for yeah. that homeowner. So I guess, you know, tonight we're gonna make this decision He's going to monitor the progress, mm -hmm. and if he feels that in a couple months, if this is not the best solution, he will return yeah. to us Correct. and mm -hmm. make a new recommendation. Mm -hmm. So, Correct. yeah, I'm just concerned about the sewage that continues to pour over from this homeowner's property. I spoke to him today, yeah. and he said at the moment the ground is dry. Okay. Yeah, the ground is dry. Well, yeah. but there's no yeah. there's no overflow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to accept. Alan Madera's recommendation on treating uh, 19 Main Street's uh, cesspool as a temporary holding tank. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Jeremy Troutman Poultry Operation Letter of Credit Reduction. Uh, this is based on an inspection done by McCarthy Engineering on August 10th, 2022. They have recommended the reduction of the letter of credit in an amount of $92,295.49. The letter of credit amount with auto increases is currently at $186,646.41. Uh, taking that away would leave a retained balance of $94,000. $350.92. Uh, we made a motion at the workshop meeting to authorize the above reduction. Next item on the agenda is the Marion Township Municipal Action Plan. Uh, this is required by Berks County Hazard Mitigation. Uh, they need us to review, update, and return by September 30th. I have an update about this. I did speak about it with John, and he's actually been discussing it with the other emergency management coordinators in the county. So he needs a little bit more time to review. I'll let him know that there's the deadline by September 30th. And I did put in the scan things. Um, okay. I put the last one that we completed. Okay. So you have the answer. He has the answer okay. there. Okay. Just as a kind of yeah. And he wants to make sure that everyone else within the county can kind of give him all the necessary information. So he wants to make sure it's reviewed <laughs> to the best of his knowledge. Well, do, do they need a motion to put? You know, and you can make a motion. Doesn't hurt. Yeah. Doesn't hurt. Never, never heard. Even if you're not going to do it, he's not going to do it right away. You can make a motion for him to do it. Sure. Then it's motion. It doesn't have to go okay. before the board again. So just, uh, I'll make a motion to review and update the Mayor Township Municipal Action Plan. As Second. A... Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the road projects for 2022, including culverts. Um, as many people have noticed, we got the first bit of lines painted. Uh, they still owe us crosswalks, but we got a whole bunch of lines painted throughout the township. Uh, most notably on Main Street has the, the very bright double yellows now and the outside whites, which should hopefully visually narrow the road a little bit and cut down on incidental speeding. Um, I'm getting prices around the uh, pedestrian bollards, like we had talked about before, so that we can put cro crossing signs in the crosswalks once they're there. Uh, and I'm looking at what the signage requirements are for speed limit and speed limit change signs. Um, the intent maybe being to put some more signage along that stretch coming off of 422 to notify people that there is a change coming up in speed limit, that it is in fact not still 55. 
Um, so I'll continue working on that and then getting that that sign order in along with the uh, the other ones that we had discussed, like the intersection ahead and the thank you the, the T crossing. Um, as it pertains to culverts, uh, box culverts were ordered and awarded to Monarch Products. Uh, Reichert Road was a total of eighty six thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars. Marion Drive South was eighty thousand eight hundred and twenty four dollars. Sheridan Road was one hundred and one thousand four hundred and forty five dollars. Uh, and Marion Drive North was $89,598. This came to a total of $358,627. Uh, the contract has been executed and we've gotten permits for most. However, the GP7 permit was denied for Marion Drive North of School Road. Um, Sue's already had some conversation with the engineering uh, and that it's the good news is it's not a situation where we have to start over. We just have to, to refile some stuff. So uh, there are in addition to that, as we mentioned during public comment on Saturday, we started talking about uh, attacking some other smaller projects that we'd be able to do locally with the road crew now that we have the backhoe, uh, the most notable being that pipe uh, at Main Street and Marion Drive. Yep. So more on that next month. Hopefully, maybe by then we'll have a, an engineer plan to look at. Um, also, as it relates to roads, uh, the Main Street traffic study that we did uh, or had done, I should say, to assess stop sign placement, uh, unfortunately came back uh, with the result of we're not able to put a stop sign in. Um, it would remove too many parking spaces to do that. And I think we're, we're solving one problem and creating another when we do that. Um, we're looking at putting up more speed limit and other signage to help uh, mitigate the, the speeding in the, the same way that we were hoping the stop sign might. Yes. Butch, come up here. Yeah, so come, come up can't hear you back there. I'm Butch Straub, 1045 Stylesburg Road. Uh, we ought to put the uh, rest of those uh, signs up at the at the corners. Oh, yeah, the, the, the no parking here at the corner. Yeah. Yeah. I um, have a generator that I can use to pull around or like. Because I know out here on Water Street on, on this side. Yeah. Uh people are parking pretty close to the curb again. Yeah. Let's let's make it a point of doing that. And, but I know when and you and Donald, I went out Donald Sharp Road too. Yeah. They park right on the corner. Yeah. We'll get the signs in, but I know like when you and I tried to do that before, it's because there's yeah. concrete there and we have to cut it out. Oh okay. And we just didn't have the tools to do it. Right. So we'll we'll find a time. Other we'll, tools you can run? Uh, I mean functionally, yeah, we can paint the curbs. That's within within uh, vehicle code to do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's an idea. You can pick up some paint and do that, but we do, yeah. yeah. So as long as you measure it and you get the right measurement, we do also have the signs and we were planning on putting the signs in, but we, we have to, we have to delicately cut out some, some people's sidewalk and we didn't want to just go at that with a hammer just out of respect for not yeah. messing up people's sidewalk. Um, uh, so Ruth on the Zoom said that speed has increased since the white lines were painted. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm curious because that's it's the just, exact opposite of what normally happens yeah. when you do that. So we're just so restricted as yeah. to what we can do. So do we? Because it's we're not going to like vote on spending the money. But um, Jim, do you want to talk about the speed signs that you had looked at getting? That is an item. It's not, do, we want, do we want to jump ahead to that for a second? So yeah, can you? okay. Uh, for those of you who come in through Wilmersdorf, you've probably seen their speed sign, although I noticed today it's down. I don't know if they're relocating it or if they had a problem with it, but it's a sign that it's a digital sign. It basically says how fast you're going and tells you to slow down. The, the speed is posted above it. They are rather expensive. Uh, they're about $3,000 a piece. But if we wait next year, they're anticipated to go to a minimum of $3,600 if they can get parts. Uh, that seems to be an issue for all manufacturing right now. But at any rate, I had brought it up about, I know it isn't in the budget, but do we want to consider putting one at each end of town in hopes that that would help to slow the traffic down? Uh, the only other option that I'm aware of that we could even think about is that we've talked about putting in speed bumps and I don't think it's a great idea. Um, which will hate us. Yeah. Yeah. So every well, anybody the plowing, the plowing would hate us. us, and so would every every yeah. resident in town. Yeah. Hitting. Uh, I know my Prius would bottom out. <laughs> yeah. 
They're coming through town. Yeah, no, I know that asphalt. down there, especially. Yes, you're right. And down your way. But they hit, they hit that long straightaway and they just they floor it. Yeah. So I don't know. Do we want to consider purchasing these signs now? I'm I'm all for it. I would say let's wait until next month to order it. That way it can be I'll get uh, up. actually with, get it being, with it being on the agenda. We can, okay, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to make I'm sure. I'm not exactly sure though the total cost yet. I have it right here. Do well, you have it? Peter, it's on the scan stuff. Yep, hold on. I'm going to scroll through all of the Jeremy Troutman stuff that we just did. It's after the Western, the Keeping of Pets thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can tell me a little laptop. I need to get enough of this. Yeah. Franchising, there's Comfort, there's Crafts. Okay. There's the stop sign. Go up one. Right after that is the municipal action plan. Do you, do you have them in your packet? Are you in Google Drive? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in the, the file out on Google Drive. It. Yeah, like I said, we can we can reallocate that out of one of the other budget yeah. lines. The uh, best quote was with Main Street Industries, who, by the way, is the company that put in Wilmersdorf's. Uh, the cost. One they had two different quotes. I was confused. Is it one and there's a three? Yeah, one yeah, three. Well, we don't I don't know that we need want three. two. So well, they there are cost of two thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars per sign. Of course, we are tax exempt, so that would be a total of five thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars. So I'd like to make a motion to purchase two 14-inch solar amber. On voice radar, uh, radar speed signs from Main Street Industries for a total cost of $5,990. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Mm -hmm. Well, we, 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 we hang it on the pole. Like that's, yeah, yeah. that's us. We yeah. we we would we would do that, yeah. This is hardware. There's no like service or, or maintenance plan associated with it. Yeah, you have to put you have to pedal your bike past it at an exact speed, Butch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next up is the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, we got a letter on July twentieth. Um, Eric Walden will contact us discussing the negotiation of a renewal agreement. Andy suggested hiring Cohen and Associates from Pittsburgh to renegotiate the new contract for the cable franchise. They're a boutique law firm that does specialize specifically in communications work, and that's all they do. Uh, this area of law is apparently very unique. It is very rapidly evolving and very complicated. Um, Irene, you actually spoke with someone at yes. Cohen. Yes, and so they just want us to forward our last franchise agreement, and they'll give us a um, estimate as to what the fee is. And they said it's a flat fee, and they're quite reasonable. So I apologize, Sue. I thought I could come in tomorrow, but I got cold and so work. Okay. So are you okay if I come in Wednesday? You could just you could just forward me the email, and I could forward it to them, mm -hmm. okay, and I'll finish that up. Mm -hmm. So I'll get on the phone and let them know that I'm sending an email. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Peter, you skipped number nine. Did I? Mm -hmm. Oh, I apologize. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, I skipped right by that. Thank you, Sue. Uh, item number nine is the township engineering proposal. Uh, Irene had reached out to several engineering firms, and we had only received one proposal uh, up until uh, this morning. 1.30 yeah. today. No, yeah. 1 30. 1.30. Okay. Well, slightly early afternoon. <laughs> so I want to look this over, and I want to compare uh, the services along with the, the rate cut sheet and hopefully for next month's meeting we'll be able to make a decision between uh system design engineering and craft engineering the two places that have expressed enough interest to actually give us proposals yep so 
Um, we'll have more on that and hopefully something definitive. Uh, that way we have the new engineering lined up before the year ends uh, as McCarthy engineering trans uh, transitions off. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're in Leesport. Leesport. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the office equipment, uh, the request to order another printer. Uh, we talked about it at the workshop, and I have that ordered. It should be here uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, when it gets here, I'll bring it in and get it installed. Yeah. Yeah. What it means is that I get to move out of this area. Sue gets to have more space for her filing. We get to get an assistant secretary for Sue. I, and I get to work desperately. Right. Yeah. Get, you, you actually get a desk. I am desk. struggling. I yeah. am really struggling. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It, it's hard and we're constantly getting up and back and forth with the file room. So I get to move into the other room, have my own space, but I'll miss you, Sue. Um, but also Dan, Dan comes into work with me too. So Hopefully it'll make things a little bit better for workspaces and materials. So yeah, I mean, if nothing yeah. else, you'll have more workspace for yeah. simple things like a right to know request. You'll yeah. have the ability to lay stuff out a little more. Yeah, easily. I have everything all over the desks in there now. So the tables, excuse me. Yeah. Like I said, when that gets in here, I'll yeah. bring it in and get it set up. But yeah. it's the uh, the one that we had discussed last week on yeah. Saturday. Um, next item is the proposed dog leash uh, curbing ordinance. Um, I did talk to Andy. He said there would be a draft copy available to us tonight to review. Uh, so I would say, let's take that away. Let's review that and then potentially, uh, ideally vote on that next, uh, next board meeting. So that is an ordinance to be able to enforce if people are not leashing their dog out in public or are not uh, picking up after their dog or okay. other, other animals. We wrote the, the ordinance in a way that is, um, broad enough that if somebody for some reason decided to walk their pet goat or an alligator or something like that, it would be just as applicable to them if it yeah. was a dog. Yeah. So we don't want. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Te right. Technically, right. technically, that would apply. Yeah. Technically, yeah. that's. Yeah. 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 And it, uh, some of it revolves around, uh, you know, poop pickup. So we don't want poop left on our neighbor's properties. So. What was that? Uh, police, yeah, it's like, yeah, and 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 call, call our friends the police, they have a copy of all of our ordinances. Yeah, um, and everything new is getting posted on the website, so there's 24 7 access. Yep. So. My, my office did send a proposed copy of that ordinance to Susan this afternoon. Okay, um, I, I don't know if you if I, the board wanted to review that ordinance before making any type of motion to authorize we'll, we'll that. Do, we'll, we'll do that at the next, next meeting, meeting, but yeah, we'll, we'll read it through. But yeah, uh, okay, thank you. Probably after I yeah, it was probably after you left for the day. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll, I'll be happy if there's not so many modifications. Yeah. I'll feel yeah. really good about yeah. myself. Yeah. That'll be... Isn't that have to go through the joint zoning? The yeah. dog leash one? No. 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 The, the only one that has to go through the Western Burks joint zoning is the next one, which is the, the keeping of pets. Um, we're looking to change the definitions in our in the Western Burks joint zoning ordinance, section 403, uh, to modify the uh, statements around the keeping of pets and domesticated animals uh, that would allow for chickens on properties less than one acre. Um, Andy had given us a draft ordinance. We had made some changes and some, some revisions. Um, we're at a point where we like it, but we would now need to have this reviewed by each municipality and the joint uh, groups planning commission, their board, and then like with any change to the joint zoning, uh, it would have to go through a public hearing. So the goal here is to start that process off uh, sooner rather than later and get that going because at this point it's still technically a law it's just one that we're voluntarily not enforcing because of um i'll, I'll say the ethical reasons behind yeah. uh that law in an agricultural community. community yeah so next thing uh is the purchase of street signs uh butch checked our sign inventory we need a couple of stop signs a couple of stop ahead uh two canal road signs and two intersection aheads and five posts. Uh, I will be getting that order with MSI this week. Okay. That way Butch can pick them up. Um, I believe we actually had already motioned to, to purchase signs, but yes, I can just, just I'll make a motion just to be safe. So I'll make a motion to uh, purchase two stop sign ahead, four stop signs, two canal road signs and two, two intersection ahead signs along with five sign posts from, from MSI. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the old John Deere front end loader and small John Deere tractor mower. Um, they're just sitting there collecting dust. I'd like to make a motion to put them out on Municipid and see what we can get for them. 
Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Uh, Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Do you know how to do municipal? I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'd like to, I had to ask Andy. Yeah. Could, yeah. I had asked Andy. Can we put a res is there a reserve that we can put on them? Probably. I'll have to look at the yeah, municipal bid thing. But that, I, I mean, I, I don't want to see them. I, I see us give them. I, I doubt those things start at like a penny. They're not like an eBay auction. Yeah. Like that. Know, so but, yeah. We'll we'll get it figured out and we'll get it put up there. But getting it approved to do that is the first step. Yeah. You know, I'm just street marking since. Say again. Yeah. So you have to go through certain things if you're a municipal entity to sell off old equipment. And we have the the old uh, loader and thing like that, that they're not, they're not being used. They're in kind of a state of disrepair. They're old. It, 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 you need more than the, the lawn roller, Al. But we'll if we have if we have money, we'll look at. Or I don't. I, I think you may be overestimating what we're going to be able to sell yeah, those for, so. Al. Yeah. Um. So, uh, move, moving on, the PennDOT waiver request for engineering fees. Uh, we received a letter in June from the Retu engineering firm on behalf of PennDOT to identify the floodplains within the Talpahawk and Forge Road bridge, bridge rehabilitation project area. Uh, this needed to be reviewed by our engineer. They were told we will build them for the engineering fees. They are now requesting a waiver for these fees. Uh, Jim, I believe you were going to contact them a little on further on that. Yes. And if you didn't I, uh, get to it yet. Then... I left a message again this morning. Okay. Uh, Chad did not call me back. I spoke with a very nice lady at their agency who knew nothing about the project. Uh, so Chad was supposed to call me back and did not. So hopefully I'll hear from him before the next meeting. And okay. The only question I had was, have they already done a floodplain survey? Because they're asking us to do one and they don't want to pay for it. Well, that's not happening. Yeah. If we have to do that, we're going to send them the bill. And I want him to know that. But perhaps they've already done it. And that's why they're asking for a waiver from us. Yeah. So we'll find out. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Berks County Association of Township Officials 2022 Convention. This will be held on Thursday, October 20th. 2022 from 5 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. at the Oldie Fair Center. Reservations must be made by October 1st. There is no charge. At the workshop meeting, we made a motion to authorize supervisors, secretary, treasurer, tax collector, and elected auditors to attend if interested. Uh, if you want to go and you're one of those individuals in this, those groups, uh, please let Sue know uh, no later than October 1st, and we'll make sure that you get your reservation. Next item is the Berks County Public Works Association Annual Trade Show. Uh, this is being held on Wednesday, September the 28th, 2022 at the OA Fairgrounds, going from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, Jane Meeks, the Executive Director of the Berks County Solid Waste Authority, will be speaking about recycling grants, uh, and there will be equipment skill rodeos. Um, again, registration has to be by September the 18th. We made a motion to authorize supervisors, secretary, treasurer, or road crew interested to attend. So again, if you are interested and you're one of those individuals in one of those groups, please let Sue know by September the 18th. Next is the statewide tax recovery close and return report. Uh, this is per capita tax for Zachary Meck and Barry Sands, who were both deceased. In the past, we had gotten exemption request forms to complete. Uh, Sue so will be reaching out to statewide to let them know that we need the exemption request. I sent them an email. I have not heard back. Okay. I have well, a feeling I won't, so yeah. I'll keep hounding them. I'm good at hounding. Okay. <laughs> uh, nothing more on that until we get those back. We've gotten this, these sorts of requests in the past, but they've always come in, in, in writing. So next is the 4045 Conrad Weiser Parkway notice of violation cease and desist order. Uh, we had a complaint about numerous junk vehicles on this commercial property. Carthy Engineering did an inspection on August the 10th and found a clear violation of the 9-21-2021 approved permit for an automobile repair garage. Um, based on the state of the property, they actually now meet the definition of a junkyard, according to our zoning. Uh, on August 11th, they were issued a notice of violation along with the cease and desist order. Uh, we'll be hearing more about that, I'm sure, as the weeks develop. But uh, they have submitted a an application for a fix permit. Okay, good, good. 
that's fence. that's the it's our zoning requires it generally yeah. to be fenced in yeah it has to yeah in some way yeah they're they're going to try and comply with the, okay. the updated definition so good on them um next is the ball field maintenance and lights uh we're looking at a condition on the third baseline where flooding and eroding is happening there's also lots of weeds coming up uh the mtca would like to install lights at the ball field for nighttime games although don you said on saturday that that wasn't 100 percent true um bottom line is if we want to put lights up i'm perfectly okay with that rather than running an electrical line out there with an electrician i'd say we just get some of those little solar panel ones that can like clip onto things they work pretty good yeah i mean anywhere out there whether it's the ball field or the one of the other things is the multi-purpose court is let's let's get some some lights that we don't have to trench and pay an electrician to run a line out there we just get a, a couple of those things and yeah um the multi-purpose court is the next thing on the agenda also about lights and maintenance uh the mtca would like to start using that as a skating rink um i have really no objections to that uh, they were looking at plastic uh, to lay down, but one of the things that we had discussed on the, the workshop meeting was potentially looking at uh, alternatives for actually sealing it. I know you guys had tried to seal it in the past, um, and, and yeah, it was unsuccessful. So we had the the idea of maybe let's call a place that specializes in pools and see if they have anything up their sleeve in terms of like epoxy or special sealing stuff that well, they could put outdoor in. rink places yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, but making some calls rather than have you guys spend money on a piece of plastic that you're going to have to replace every couple of years, maybe just make the capital investment on turning it into an ice rink over the winter. So we'll we'll be looking at that more. But again, like we said, with the ball field with the lights, um, if we're going to do anything with lights, we should do the little solar panel variety things because they're the easiest to, to install and maintain. Don, I didn't get a chance to go up and look at that. Are there cracks in that? Is that why it was unable yeah. to be sealed? Just not the they made. And so I'd be curious about that because that'd be pretty cool. That'd be yeah. certainly interesting. It would be the only place yeah. around that's ice skating in the summer. Never heard of that one. Yeah. So the alternative, if we're going to try and put epoxy down, is we'd have to we'd have to resurface that first. We'd have to put cement down. Yeah. All right. It only resurfaces how how far it's how when when they when they push it resurfaces and they all be yeah. Either way, we're going to look at it. Yeah. We want to see if there's right. some things that might be able to be done rather than you guys, like I said, buying a tarp every couple of years or something like that. Us just. I can take my kids to go out and buy it. Last year, Yeah. 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 Yeah, please. Yeah. He don't, he don't talk. He don't need to serve people. He has fellows to do. Yeah. Yeah, any information you can get us. So great. that epoxy then fills those cracks in. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that'd be ideal. Yeah. It's probably very expensive, but see if you can get some information. Because I think that'd be wonderful. Yeah, I agree. I think it'd be great to have that up there and have the kids have an opportunity to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. 
it's probably something similar. It's it's a two part thing that when you mix them together, a chemical process hardens it, and it's it's going to seep down into everything and basically make like a plastic coat hmm. over everything. So uh, that shouldn't matter. And yeah. it's self leveling too. I yeah, think. most things like that wow. are self leveling. But, well, that may be the way to go. Yeah. Unless you have to it. Say again? Unless you have to bid it. What? Unless you have to bid it. Oh, I mean, I don't think it's going to be that expensive. It would no. have to be over like 21000 to be out for bid. So it better not be better, like 21000 better, better not be more than $21,000. Um, okay. Next item on the agenda is the stormwater waiver request. This is for 13 Apple Blossom Lane. Uh, Mr. Walter Alsig had submitted a permit application to extend his patio approximately 200 square feet using pavers and is requesting a waiver of the stormwater management requirement. Uh, this is similar to some of the other ones that we had seen in Stonecroft. So I'm going to make a motion to grant the waiver request for 13 Apple Blossom Lane. Second. Second. Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. I was gonna... Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Have we ever gotten any more feedback over that particular issue? With the roads? No, with, with the, the stormwater. Oh, so I actually, I did talk to yeah. Andy today. Okay. There, uh, There's an amendment that we can put in that would uh, basically remove that okay. as, as a problem. Okay. Um, we don't have it yet for review, okay. but we will probably by next month, unless, okay. unless you send it over. Read it today? Yeah. So okay. if, we, if we got it, if it's in the, the mailbox, yeah. so we'll send it out tomorrow. Okay. Um, I got it. I got it today. Well, okay. I got it three hours ago. Y yeah. But so we'll uh we'll be looking at that. Because I'm like missing lots of stuff. So. Did you get a new phone? Um, uh, a couple of months ago now. So uh, Sue, I actually don't see the police report in the packet. Do you have yeah, a Do you have a paper copy of that? Yeah, I have it. I don't know. I'm in the agenda items, and it's the last thing on there is the uh, the junk vehicle stuff. Thank you. And the, and the engineer's report? I don't have that either. Okay. <laughs> okay. So bear, bear with me a second. So uh, the police report for last month, there really was not a huge amount of activity. That 25? Oh, the proposed budget. I'm, I'm skipping stuff, so I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, the 2023 proposed budget, um, so I just kind of blurred that together from Saturday. Uh, we are not going to be uh, scheduling a special meeting for that. We're going to be using one of the workshops and one of the, the board meetings. That way there's a, a better turnout of people. Um, Sue is going to work on making sure that we don't have to advertise anything, which I don't think we do if other do than the budget. The workshop, you yeah. don't have to advertise. It's, a, okay. it's already yeah. advertised. Yeah. So, with that said, um, spread the word that it'll probably be sometime maybe next month or the month following that we're going to be going over the budget. Yeah, uh, so Irene, you're, you're going to run out the reports. I'm going to crunch yeah. the numbers like I did yeah. last year, and we'll go like we did last year, line by line, yeah. and go through it. I mean, everything is, is – is, we've been trying to keep up to date with it at the meeting, and, you know, I don't think there's anything glaring, but there's a couple of things that have popped up. So, like, it's, I was re-reviewing yeah. it tonight. I'm going to – Yeah, we'll, we'll re-forecast sure. yeah. on that. The nice thing is because we've done this – uh, a number of years in a row now, we actually have the data in yep. in the system where we can get a historical trend easily. Yep. Um, so we'll look, be looking at that more, but uh, I'll be working on that between now and next month's meeting. Excellent. Thank you. Um, the only comment that I have is the police report, which Sue was kind enough to hand me over. Not a whole lot of activity. They had 24 security checks. There were 11 citations issued, 12 traffic stops. So it looks like somebody got off with a warning. Uh, there were 17 EMS fire advisories and uh, a total of uh, four incidents and six complaints. So really nothing out of the ordinary there, nothing crazy. Um, Irene, do you have any comments? No. You want to do the engineer report or no? Um, I mean, there's not really much on there that we haven't already covered. Mm -hmm. Just the last four items, I think it is. Uh, the last main. four being, three, we already four. covered 37 main. There's the Troutman poultry operation. Um, just for a matter of record, um, the Jeremy Troutman uh, operation, uh, actually, excuse me, that's the Jeremy Troutman 991 Stouchburg Road. Uh, their improvement agreement has come due, and they have 30 calendar days from the date of this letter that McCarthy Engineering sent 
uh, to either complete the project and request the final closeout or to submit a formal written request for an extension of time along with a detailed timeline of what it will take to complete the projects to the Board of Supervisors. The last four are the same thing. They're all expired. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Even the, the 37 main? No. Because that, that shouldn't be expired. That's no, not 37 main. Yeah. Then so the three. last then it's three. Last three. Okay. So the Troutman poultry operation is the one that I just covered. Okay. Uh Jacob Weiss. Uh, expired March 23rd, 2018. I believe they got an extension before. And Glenn Brubaker uh, has also expired for 1124 Route 419. So um, I'd imagine we're going to see another one of these letters for each one of those properties. Yeah. For the and I Every, just love getting my letters. Everything else we covered yeah. throughout the course of the meeting. Yeah. Okay. I read it. Nothing for Jim, anything for you? Well, I've only been on the board for a short time. Have, has there ever been any discussion about these gas tanks that we have outside? Yes. Um, so are you talking about the ones above ground or the ones below ground? The ones below ground. Yeah. So I looked at what would take to what it would take to remove them. And uh, it's if we can get away with filling it in, we'd be able to fill it in. But the likelihood of that is pretty slim. We would have to dig them out. And the way that works is when you dig them out, if there is contamination, if there is any leaking, you have to keep digging until you hit clean soil, which it's a, it's a very, uh, I'll say dangerous thing, because uh, we could get off pretty easily in the sense that we just have to dig it out and put a little dirt in, or it may be a monumentous project that we've, we've entered ourselves into. We haven't been put on notice by anybody no, that we nope, need nope, to do that? Nope. As long as we pay our underground yeah. tank storage insurance fee every year, which is like 400 bucks, uh, it's a non-issue. Are they empty? Yes. For the most part. I think there's a little bit. There's a little bit of heating oil. That is empty. Yeah. So there's probably a little bit of scum in the bottom, but right. it's, it's not. Bonus. What was in the other one? Yeah. Gasoline? The other two, uh, one has gas and one has diesel fuel for the trucks. And we don't, do we use that? Yes. We use the diesel. Yes. We don't use no, but we use the diesel fuel for snow plowing. And those are above them. Yes. Are we using the space that we cleared up the chemicals for in the garage? I mean, I'm sure stuff has occupied the space, <laughs> but we at least don't yeah. have the chemicals in there yeah. anymore. I mean, we ought to probably yeah. look at putting in next year's budget to get rid of those that one of at least the one above ground tank. Yeah. Before something does happen and then we end up with a major issue. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they're at the point like the above ground ones. They're not at the point where they're they're going to fall apart. The one looks horrible, but it, it looks worse than it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, but yeah, and we had talked about trying to get like countryside out or somebody like that to drain it, but they don't want to touch it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so degrading. Yeah, yeah it's it's probably so. Yeah. It's probably, well, we just, well, that's assuming that gas is any good. I it's, doubt it. Yeah. it's guaranteed not. Yeah. Yeah. Al. Last Saturday, late afternoon on Saturday, there was two guys walking up the street, checking up cars, checking houses. Went to Mary Ann's house, want to know if they want to sell the garage. And yeah, Mary. Mary, you tell the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I came home from um outside Humane Society's Corks and Bottles. And I came home and it was around 7 30. And I saw them when I came into town. I mean, when I came down Main Street and I backed my Jeep in. And right, and just like that, they were at the side of my Jeep. And there was, it was um, two of them. They averaged around, I'd say, 25 to 30 years old. And the tall one said to me, can I rent that garage? And I went, no. And he says, can I buy the place then? And I said, no. And then, thank God, my brother's truck was there. <laughs> and um, he says, uh, why not? And I says, well, I don't think my husband wants to sell it. And then he goes, why not? You can make money. And I said, because he grew up in this town, 
That's and weird. he really likes it here. I don't think he would sell. And then just like that, he says to me, I bet that garage has a lot of expensive stuff in it. And I thought, oh, fudge. And then I said, I don't really know anything about the value of anything. I said, if you want to talk to my husband, I said, he would know the value of stuff. I really don't know the value of stuff. And then I think he spotted Al watering his plants because then he says, well, okay, then. And he went across the street and it's directly across the street from me. And I saw him go on the porch and look in the window. And then at that time, somebody came up to the stop sign in a, it's a dark truck. I don't know if it was black or gray or blue. And he opened the door and I couldn't see him. And he said, I told you too to get the F out of town. I'm not telling you this again. And then, and the guy said to the gentleman in the truck, you're an angel. And he said, well, he says, how about if I get out and show you how much of an able I am? He said, I want you to, to get the F out of my town. And then at that point, they, they must have scared them because they went walking up the street and then you followed them. Okay, I don't know any more than that. You go. But I went over to the end of town. Yeah, Mary Ann's house, and, and I didn't see nobody. So then I took, went up to 422, turned around and came back. I turned in the alley. It was a car park at the alley right in the curb. When they saw me come down through there, they took off. So I, I, I went after them. I used to have a that is. They made a turn, they went up by Mary Ann, and they made a right, you know, went over towards the highway. They didn't even stop. They went right through the stop sign and everything. I said, well, they had the car wide open. I said, I'm not going to roll my van, yeah. my good Mennonite van, <laughs> a bunch of jerks. The same thing was going on in Walmart. Park, and I seen reports of the same type of activity in Newton's. The lady in Walmart reported on the social media network. She was sitting in her living room about 1.30 in the morning. Somebody with a hoodie on to hood up came and knocked on her door. She said she went to the front door of her shotgun. She cranked around in, and believe me, the, the sound of it was very distinctive. She said at that point, the guy in the front door turned on and came up the area. What's going on throughout the local community? People have contacted the police. I don't know if they reached out to Popo. I mean, they contacted the state police, and the state police got so many times talked to that lady about 20 minutes later. So they got the details. I know we got to the Wollensburg police because I asked yeah, somebody in the Wollensburg Council about it the next morning and was told that was just staff to the Wollensburg police. So, you know, the police are talking to everybody. But, I, I yeah, okay. You know, you know, the first thing you need to do is call the police. Don't answer questions like, you want to tell the house to my wife? Don't answer just say, I'm not interested. Get off my property and get out of here. Thank you, sir, for stepping up and saying, I'll show you just what kind of bad I'm saying. Thank you. Wow. Well, I okay. had a fire car. I would have taken some of it to change the car because I would have stayed with it. And then you would have to come before the media to take it But if it's going on, not only in the South Park, but mm -hmm. in the surrounding community. So we have higher scale too. We have that would be right there. Yeah. As long as you get the local government taking video of kids walking up 56th Street, crazy people, serving on car handles. Trying to find the car that's been left open. And I, I'm not going to talk with it. But I like that, I'm not going to make a call to the smart. They want to they want to stop to get a freaking job. Hey, bye. Thank you. Yeah, so Marianne, I'll, I'll make sure before you leave, let me get that picture from you and I'll pass that over to our friends at the Topahawk and police. That way they have it too. Okay. In the meantime, Marianne, you should probably sell those vehicles to me and I'll make sure that nobody's <laughs> just. Yes. Now, look in my front window of the garage, 
fully saw the little back end of the 30 months because I had just got it inspected and it was right there. But then I walked through the garage and I walked to the back garage. And that was one of the big glass windows. And I'm standing there and I'm thinking, but if you looked in that way, then he saw the four wheelers. He yeah. saw a um, generator running out of box. He saw three lights. You know, plus the trailer with various uh, rates of the And we're watching the oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I hate to tell you to do this, but you may want to soap those windows or something. Keep people. Straight paint and slap. Um, straight paint, so um, and I just moved five woods that had barred all the windows up. Good. That they can't see yeah. over the wood. Yeah, it's, it's a shame it, you have to do this yeah, stuff, but it really is a shame you have people. to do that. But it's it's probably the best move if we have unscrupulous characters. Mm -hmm. You know, what the, uh, it's one way to see the other. Well, they lost love the appearance and they were Yep. Yeah. 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 It's it's very good to take every precaution that you can. Okay. One of the guys that works for me, granted, this is down in Dallas. Uh, I think it was last week. He was in the gym, like public area, lots of parking around. He came out and somebody had cut the catalytic converter off of his truck while he was in the gym. So broad daylight, like middle of the afternoon. Later, that's how to speak to the Oh, good. Marianne, I still need to get that from you. Like I said, I, I saved it. We got it. Okay, cool. What video of them walking past her house after the man yelled at her? She'll see them up in the at the Jeep mm -hmm. because her front, her house, her foot, it's got the whole, my whole garage and my house. So I'm getting the systems we have. Good. Someone called in the meeting to die and change the staff and people told me to get out of town. You know what? You need out. You can put it in the apartment above the, uh, the black wall. Oh, it's, oh, okay. He, he had the first interaction with him. And he, he, gave, he gave me everything except for John, John Travers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's where he was claiming to live. That, the guy in the yeah. barn? that was the guy in the barn. No. Yeah. No, not the guy in the barn? I didn't think there was anybody in there. there okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I stand corrected. Yeah, yeah, okay. But he has since proved He said, I, I, he said, I didn't, he gave me the description of the vehicle, but he said he put there quite long. It was a off line of that sand, sand, super cars over there. Hmm. I provided a text on all the things that sound like they could have cut down anywhere mm -hmm. you know, the and it's harder. Well, while the, the call guy was he looks like Frank off the way of American Pickers. <laughs> so that's what Frank's doing now. <laughs> well, yeah. we'll keep as much of an eye on as we can, and I'm sure now that, like, yeah. The police are aware in the various municipalities they're going to be keeping a close eye on it too. Yeah. And uh I said, Marianne, when you give me that that picture, I'll make I my phone did not buzz at me. So before you leave, give me give me five minutes and I'll make sure that I get it. It says it's Okay. I said before you leave, give me five minutes and I'll okay. make sure that we get it. Okay. Um, do you want to send it to the county email? Can you do that? 
So while, while that's going on, Jim, do you have any other comments? Well, the only other thing I wanted to thank Irene for finally getting somebody to come in and give us an estimate no, on no, this no, building. The works and I just hounded him a little bit more for that. So but, we'll have to bring that know, up for discussion. At yeah, we'll have to discuss it, but it, by the looks of it, it's approaching about a half a million dollars easily, to, easily. to so. refurbish this building. And quite frankly, if there's anybody in this room that thinks spending a hundred, spending half a million dollars on this building is a good idea, I'd like to talk to you after the meeting because <laughs> that would make no sense whatsoever to me. So I think that it's time that we contact a realtor and start looking to see what land is available. We're under no obligation to do anything except talk to a realtor yeah, I don't and uh, find out what's out there and and then we need to start applying for grants, grants. if we're going to yep. going to move forward. Grant, grants anything. is the real vehicle for that. If we can get the grants with the grants that we know exist, we could effectively have the building for free. And I know we have a lot on our plate with roads, with sewers, with now the building, but we're just going to have to multitask and try and yep. accomplish many things at the same time. Okay. Agreed. But thank you very much for getting those yeah. accomplished. I was really convinced we were going to have to pay somebody to come in and tell us no. how much this building was going to cost to redo. Was that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. we had yeah. the attorney do that. That's that was the first thing when we first started talking about this months and months ago. Why do you? The deed looked at. Why do you ask? Do you know something we don't? Yep, we know yeah. that. We know that. The playground does not the. the it, no, it that goes back to the Conrad Weiser School District. That's what the deed says. And Conrad Weiser School District then decide how to disposition the property, just just the park, not this part of it. Yeah, and that's a situation where they'd have the power to do what they wanted, whether they could give it to the MTCA, they could give it back to the township, they could decide to keep it, although that's not terribly likely because I doubt they want yet another park they have to maintain. And my guess is they'll just give it right back to us. Yeah. They'll probably give it to the MTCA. Because what, why would they want a piece of property in another, in another township? Yeah. yeah. One of the things worth mentioning is any of the initial discussions that we had about any sort of new building is we would want to also have a park recreational space there as well. So if we had two parks, that's even better. But um, if a move happens, it would include like a ball field, walking courses, playground stuff built into what we would be looking at spending money on. So. Very, very early stages, but yeah, I, I agree. Early you know, stages. I think it maybe it's time to start talking to a, a person that specializes in, in real estate. Just to see what's out there. Mm -hmm. yep. And if uh, if any of you are have 10, 10 or 12 acres you'd like to donate, we will name the building after you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Jim? That's all. Okay. Uh, I have nothing. Fantastic. Sue, do you have any comments? Nothing. Okay. In that case, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 8.33 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Scott.